This holy man fought to the death for the law of his God and did not fear the words of the godless, for he was built on solid rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And it's a very special welcome today as we gather on this feast of St Edmund Arrowsmith in the presence of his holy hand and in this Arrowsmith house where we believe that he celebrated his last mass before he was to be taken and arrested in this area of Brindle in Lancashire where he ministered for so many years in the 17th century and on this day in 1628 he was taken from Lancaster jail to give his life for the sake of his faith in the Lord. We give thanks then today for the example of his steadfast faith and we pray that in our own way we may follow in the Lord's path. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and seek the Lord's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who brought your martyr, St. Edmund Arrowsmith, to overcome the torment of his passion, grant that we, who celebrate the day of his triumph, may remain invincible under your protection against the snares of the enemy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah. You have seduced me, Lord, and I have let myself be seduced. You have overpowered me. You were the stronger. I am a daily laughing stock, everybody's butt. Each time I speak the word, I have to howl and proclaim violence and ruin. The word of the Lord has meant for me insult, derision all day long. I used to say, I will not think about him. I will not speak in his name anymore. Then, there seemed to be a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. 
The effort to restrain it wearied me. I could not bear it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the response to the psalm is, My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. My, my soul, soul is thirsting for you, you O Lord, Lord my God. God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. My, my soul, soul is thirsting, thirsting for you, you O Lord, Lord my God. God. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. My soul, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. My soul, my soul is, is thirsting for you, you O Lord, Lord my God. And the second reading is from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, and worship him. I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings, by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behaviour of the world around you, but let your behaviour change, modelled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and to know what is good, what it is that God wants, what is the perfect thing to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our heart that we might see how great is the hope to which we are called. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then, taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what has a man to offer in exchange for his life? 
For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And when he does, he will reward each one according to his behaviour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many years ago now, as I was still considering what I thought was a vocation to the priesthood, someone gave me a little booklet entitled Against the Tide. And it was a series of reflections for those discerning their vocation and stories of those who had already trodden that path. The central theme throughout, however, as is reflected in the title, was that anyone seeking to follow the Lord, particularly in our world today, had to be prepared to swim against the tide, to go against the flow of everything and everyone around them, and to accept all that that would bring. And we see this, I think, in the lives of those presented to us in our readings today. The prophet Jeremiah and Saints Peter and Paul. And is reflected in turn in the life of St Edmund Arrowsmith. Jeremiah is a striking example of the irresistible force of God's call. He was not cut out for the mission he was to receive from God. And nothing could have prepared him for it. And so he becomes the proverbial prophet of doom, forced to deliver an unpopular message, foretelling ruin to the powerful of his day. But this was not of his choosing. Instead, it was the initiative of God, who chose him from before his birth. And despite his objections of youthfulness, God tells him, Say not, I am too young. You shall go to whomever I shall send you, and you shall speak to whomever I command you. Have no fear of them, because I am with you to deliver you. See, I place my words in your mouth. This was to have painful consequences for Jeremiah, as we read in today's first reading. For he proclaims, I am a daily laughing stock, everybody's but. The word of the Lord has meant for me insult, derision all day long. And even when he tried to put it out of his mind, God's word became a devouring fire in his heart making it impossible for him to evade his mission. And so under the influence of the Spirit, the seemingly weak and foolish speak on God's behalf. At the age of 20, St Edmund Arrowsmith, born in Haydock in 1585 and schooled in Garswood, finally succeeded in being admitted into the English College in Dawe in France, having previously made several unsuccessful attempts to make his way to Spain to enter the seminary there. Like all seminary students of his time, he took an oath promising to return to England as a missionary priest. And despite his somewhat poor health, he was ordained in Arras, in France, on the 9th of December, 1612, and in June the following year, was sent to work on the English missions. Contemporary reports speak of his mean presence, but also of his great innocence of life, sincerity of nature, sweetness of conversation, and industry of function, and another described him as zealous, witty and fervent. His zeal for his mission led to a fellow priest to wish 
that he would carry salt in his pocket to season his actions, lest too much zeal without discretion might bring him too soon into danger. Considering the vehemence and sudden storm of persecution that often assails us. And when someone deceived by his appearance tried to make a fool of him, Edmund left him thinking he had met a silly fellow. But now I see that he is either a foolish scholar or a learned fool. For ten years, St Edmund worked on the missions in Lancashire, most especially in the area here around Brindle near Leyland. And in 1624, he entered the Jesuit order. By this time, he had already been arrested once in 1622 and brought before the Bishop of Chester, a Dr Bridgman. Edmund disputed with him on the truth of the Catholic faith and the authority of the Pope. And so convincing were his arguments that he silenced the bishop. On the orders of a king who was trying to arrange a marriage with a Spanish princess, St Edmund and many other priests were then released. Like Jeremiah, St Paul too was consumed by the devouring fire of the word of God. In his letter to the Romans, Paul encourages them to live out their daily lives according to the gospel and to see the Christian moral life itself as worship of God. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, he writes, and worship him by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. The Christian life itself, then, becomes an unceasing search for conformity to God's will, a way of perfection in the footsteps of Christ. Christians should not, therefore, as St Paul tells us, model yourselves on the behaviour of the world around you, but let your behaviour change, modelled on your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and to know what is good, what it is that God wants, what is the, the perfect thing to do. St Edmund lived in dangerous times when the world around him was deeply antithetical to the Catholic faith. But he was not prepared to model his life on what he saw around him. And it was his outspoken urge to preach the truth which was to lead to his second and fatal arrest. In 1628, he challenged a, mon a young man named Holden who had contracted an illicit marriage with his first cousin. Edmund's criticism aroused the anger of the young man, who knowing the places he visited, as in this chapel, betrayed him to the authorities. And despite his attempts to escape on horseback, Edmund was captured and taken to Lancaster, where he was tried and sentenced to death. At Caesarea Philippi, St Peter confessed his faith in Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. This marks a turning point both in St Matthew's Gospel and in our readings at Mass. After Peter's confession, Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly to be killed and on the third day to be raised up again. So we are invited to focus more intently on the cross from this moment onwards. We are accustomed to the cross, 
perhaps too much, so that it loses its significance. It surrounds us, in church or at home. We carry it around with us, or we wear it, one hopes, as an object of veneration. But others tend to see it merely as a piece of bling. More sinisterly, there are those for whom the cross is an abomination and seek to have any trace of it removed from our society, but only if we let them. For Jesus' contemporaries, the cross was a symbol of torture and shame. Perhaps then Peter's response, despite his earlier divine revelation, is not so surprising. How could the Messiah, the Son of God, be subjected to violence and pain and then killed? How could we accept such an idea? For Jesus, though, Peter's reaction is yet another temptation, similar to that of Satan in the desert when he tries to entice Jesus to follow a path other than that marked out by the Father. And it is for this reason that he tells Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my way, for the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Like ourselves, Peter has to confront the harsh reality of what Jesus' messiahship is really all about. And not only that, having spoken of his own passion, Jesus then goes on to suggest what this means for those who seek to follow him. For whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For to take up the cross and follow Jesus go hand in hand. Whatever the circumstances of their lives, the true disciple must sacrifice their present life in order to see the life to come. And this, like many others of his day, is exactly what St Edmund willingly did. At his trial, the judge, Henry Yelverton, a Puritan and a notorious anti-Catholic, no doubt conscious of Edmund's reputation as a debater, refused him permission to dispute with a local minister and magistrate named Lee, to which he replied, I will not only defend my faith with words, but would gladly seal it with my blood. Two days later, he was taken from his prison cell to be hanged, drawn and quartered. At the foot of the gallows, he prayed, I freely and willingly offer to thee, sweet Jesus, this my death in satisfaction for my sins. And I wish that this little blood of mine may be sacrificed for them. A little later, he prayed, O oh Jesus, my life and my glory, I die for love of thee, for our holy faith, for the support of the authority of thy vicar on earth, the successor of St. Peter true head of the Catholic Church, which thou hast founded and established. And to those gathered to see this spectacle, he added, Bear witness, gentlemen, who have come to see my end, that I die a constant Roman Catholic, and for Jesus Christ his sake, let not my death be a hindrance to your well-doing, and going forward in the Catholic religion, but rather may it encourage you thereto. For Jesus Christ, have a care for your souls, than, nothing, than which nothing more is precious, and become members of the true Church. Nothing grieves me so much as this England, which I pray God soon to convert. 
And so St Edmund fulfilled perfectly in his life and in his death the call of Christ to discipleship in the Gospel today. Thanks be to God, times have changed in our country and we no longer have to pay the ultimate sacrifice St Edmund paid to remain true to our faith. There are, though, still many in our world today for whom that sacrifice is still a reality. And we pray that the Lord will strengthen them in their trials. For ourselves, we can only do what we do today because of the faith of our martyrs. May we never take what they did for granted but keep alive their memory and in our own day become heralds of the gospel to our own society, which is greatly in need of its message. And so we profess together now our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Let us give thanks to the King of Martyrs, who offered himself at the Last Supper and laid down his life on the cross. Through the martyrs who were slain for God's word, let us give glory to our Saviour, the faithful and true witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Through the martyrs who bore witness to your love, set us free to live for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the martyrs who proclaimed your saving death, give us a deep and constant faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the martyrs who took up your cross, grant us courage for every trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the martyrs washed in the blood of the Lamb, give us grace to conquer our weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for a moment for our own particular needs. We seek the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we pray. Hail Amen. Mary, full Lord of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, you gave your martyr, St. Edmund Arrowsmith, grace to lay down his life for Christ. Help our weakness too. Give us the strength to live for you, even as he did not shrink from dying for your sake. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace, May we be set afire with that flame of your love, through which St. Edmund Arrowsmith overcame even bodily torment, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint Edmund Arrowsmith, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St Edmund Arrowsmith, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy for ever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. We pray now for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of, of the world. world. Have the mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of, of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr, St. Edmund Arrowsmith, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.